If you're considering cocoa coir for your indoor plant production, hopefully you tune into this video to gain some helpful information provided by Tobacco University. All right, let's get into cocoa coir for indoor cannabis plant production here. So cocoa for uh, cuckoo for coconuts, uh, we're looking here. Cocoa coir is made up of the husk of the coconut, you can see right here, and there's also other products from it. It's produced primarily in Sri Lanka, Philippines, Indonesia, Mexico, and parts of the Caribbean and South America. It's a very popular growing substrate, and it was once considered a waste product due to, in part, its very slow decomposition rate, which takes about 20 years. However, keep in mind, it can be a little bit of a variable product because it is a natural product, so one batch to another may have some degree of variation. While similar, there is a, uh, is, is a natural product, so that variation is to be expected, um, so just keep that in mind. and companies are getting better and decreasing the amount of variability you get from one batch to another. There are three types uh, kind of presented here. There's the cocoa pith or peat, and this looks like peat moss retains water very well to the point that growers need to monitor conditions to avoid root rots, so keep that in mind. If you're using cocoa fibers, these are not very absorbent, but do allow for great aeration of the root zone, but will break down over time, reducing the amount of uh, aeration if you're reusing that particular substrate. And the cocoa chips, uh, that re does retain water, but still maintains porosity, so this provides the best of cocoa pith and fibers kind of like the kind of in-between role. Now the properties, just in general, if you want really the kind of scientific properties, fiber lengths, average tensile strength, specific gravity, elongation percentages, all of that's provided here. So in general, cocoa coir can hold water while still allowing the roots to have sufficient aeration, hold their properties for longer than standard soilless um, options that are available. The peach does tend to favor the 5.2 to 6.8 range, so keep that in mind. And this does lack plant available nutrients, but is still preferred by many growers because of of its main property that is simply inert, it doesn't really react with very many things. So again, it's popular because of that aeration to the roots, minimal pathogens as well as a great benefit, uh, reduced pest pressure uh, in the initial substance using it right out of the bag, or in this case using it in a um, container. So when you're purchasing uh, this particular product, this uh, coconut coir, as you can see here as just an example, you want to look to see if the material has been triple washed to limit the chance of the substrate containing high salts. In addition, having uh, an included uh, SDS uh, sheet, which is the uh, safety data sheet, helps provide information about the product and also shows a high level of commitment by the company that they stand behind their product and have gotten it tested. Make, su make sure that it has multiple rinse cycles as salt content is uh, possible with this uh, product. And also to ensure pathogen-free environment, there can be chemical treatments applied, so reviewing the SDS sheet can be very important to let you know how that particular company chose to treat that product. Uh, it, this product does aggressively hold calcium, magnesium, and iron, so be sure to have these fertilizers on hand if you're going to be using this as a substrate. Now it's often part of a blend, so some growers grow it in like a pure form, others use it as a blend. And it is commonly mixed with potting soil or also perlite. Growers typically do a 50-50 mix of soil or soilless mixes with the cocoa to kind of get the benefit of both. And we could see here varying recipes, some people can grow it in it straight, some people have, you know, the different uh, combinations. So just be aware with whatever blend you're using, it's going to have slightly different properties. Um, so be aware to be able to handle those properties in your growing operation. Now when you're using cocoa, it's kind of the last statement, hopefully you've made it to the end here. Growers should be feeding plants frequently typically daily or at least every other day uh, to avoid nutrient deficiencies in this media, particularly in container growing. Um, it's hard to overwater this, so it offers a great margin for error for newer growers, and make sure you have a calcium magnesium product on hand. Uh, this is great that it also has a little bit of iron um, as well, uh, so great product to have on hand if you're using coco coir because those fibers really do hold on to those calcium, those magnesium molecules greater than what the plant's roots can take up. So supplementing with this product will ensure your plants avoid any chance of a nutrient deficiency.